Hi, I'm Steve Wilcox, and I'm here to introduce you to the basics of 3D digital archiving and preservation. The Art Project was founded with the goal of creating an online database of threatened historical sites. We realized that no landmark or monument is immune to destruction, so our nonprofit organization wanted to make sure that whatever is too valuable, too important, or too unique not be in danger of being lost or forgotten. Our cultural heritage defines who and what we are, and we can all play a vitally important role in preserving it. Now, about our process. ARC uses photography to archive through a process called photogrammetry. Photogrammetry uses a specific photographic technique to measure the distance between objects or parts of an object to create a three-dimensional model of the subject. The procedure involves taking many photos of your chosen subject, as if your camera were a 3D scanner that needs to see every angle. But the best part about this technology is that you don't necessarily have to have access to a high-end camera in order to participate in taking pictures for our database, which makes it more accessible. A cell phone camera that is 8 megapixels and above, such as the latest iPhone or Samsung, will also work. For those that do have access to high-end camera equipment, the camera ideally should be a prime lens, such as a 24mm or 50mm lens, and the resolution should ideally be 24 megapixels and above. Now, for the general rules of photogrammetry. This process requires taking photos from many angles and heights. Take images of subjects from three to six levels, low, medium-low, medium, medium-high, medium and high, circling around the object at 10 degree intervals. Now, most objects require at least 100 images. More complex ones can be in the thousands. The most important thing to remember is that each image should overlap the previous one by two-thirds. Without this proper overlap, you could be missing photographic points that will be necessary to have when importing these into the software which builds a 3D model. Now, on to the camera settings. It is important to remember that good exposure and sharp images are key. The ISO needs to be as low as possible, ideally 100, and for aperture, minimum of an f8. If you have to sacrifice one of your settings, it should be your ISO because it is most important to keep sharp focus and a high depth of field in order to get the best results for the 3D solve. Now with regard to your camera lens, as I mentioned earlier, it is best to use a 24mm or 50mm fixed focal lens, but there are alternatives to this. If you only have a telephoto lens, tape it off securely so that it can not change in focal length. Don't worry if you accidentally bump the lens and change the settings. If this happens, reset the lens and take a photo of your hand to signal the break. It's important to remember for image processing to signal breaks when images are not overlapping. This allows our software to not get confused between different sets of photo groups that don't share overlap from one picture to the next. The picture of your hand will distinguish between these sets of images. And for image format, one should ideally shoot in camera RAW files. RAW files allow for the broadest range of exposure and the most information to be retained in the image you're shooting. Change of position is key in photogrammetry. If you are rotating the object from a fixed position with a locked off camera, you will rotate it 10 degrees between each photo. If your object is in a fixed position, then you are required to move around the object, again ideally around 10 degrees each photo. Before you begin shooting, it is important to first take a photo of the object next to the color checker so that the images can be properly color corrected. Next, use scale bars or something that can be used to create scale, such as a ruler or tape measure, and take at least 24 images of the scale bar, including the surrounding area of the object at various angles. Reshoot any images in which the scale bars are blocking any part of the object. Through trial and error, we have found the best way to shoot outdoors. Overcast skies are best for lighting your subject, as it minimizes shadows and glare. If it's sunny, try to shoot when the sun is directly overhead the subject and never use an on-camera flash. In order to best help you get a more thorough understanding of the types of subject matters that photogrammetry works for, we've included a number of examples and in-depth instructions for each. 
When shooting landscapes, buildings, or large objects, shoot rotations as low to the ground as possible and as high up as possible. It is ideal to shoot about 10 feet from the subject. A ladder, monopod, or selfie stick are great tools for capturing high angles of landscapes and or architectural elements. In a studio setting, when photographing small objects, walk around the object shooting every 10 degrees to equal a minimum of 32 images around object per level. Shoot from three to six different levels or heights depending on the complexity of the object. Sometimes you might be shooting objects with limited access, such as art hanging on a wall, or an object you can't move, such as petroglyphs. When this is the case, shoot with a staggered grid pattern. When shooting complex objects, shooting multiple levels straight on will not be enough. It is important to shoot 45 degree angle images on multiple levels as well. The more complex an object is, the more photos you will need to take. Be sure to photograph around anything that might be in the way of your subject. As you would if you bumped the lens while shooting, take a picture of your hand in between levels of shots to signal a break in overlapping. We hope this tutorial helped you understand all the necessary steps involved in photogrammetry. ARC has additional resources to aid you, so feel free to contact us with any questions you might have. We're working to generate synergies and provide support for the currently separate and solitary efforts of like-minded activists, museums, and organizations with an end goal of forging a unified global response to emerging crises. No landmark or monument is safe, so let's work together to digitally preserve these sites for generations to come.